Hello guys and I'm back with another video. This one's going to be a little different. I'm going to be talking about the SDC Shar ISRO launch site in Sriharikota. Fun fact, this is where the Chadrayaan 3, the recent Muna Legion rocket was launched from. And now we're going to look a little bit more deeper into this. So now we are exploring Launchpad 2 in SDC Shar Sriharikota and this Chandrayaan 3 was launched from Launchpad 2. And in the image, you can see these things sticking out. These are called mechanical arms and there are six of them. They are used to transport water, fuel, etc. They are movable. As in they can connect to the water, they can go up and down, etc. They can move up and down to access the rocket. And now we're going to be looking at water. And they actually use about 1,500 liters. And you can see the water tanks in the image. And the following are the uses. So they reduce the sound of the rocket's engines. As in, as soon as the rocket is being started up, the air, the sound of the engines are far too loud for us humans to hear. And then to cool the engines, as soon as the engines started up, they occur way too much heat. So to cool the engine, we use water, prevents damage to the launch pad. So launch pad is reusable. As in, they use the launch pad for several other rockets. And as soon as the rockets fire, like the flame is thrown onto the metal on the launch pad, it kind of melts, it corrodes, etc. And so to reduce that damage, they use water. And only use groundwater, as salt water may interfere with the engines. So actually this is groundwater. And salt water actually interferes with the engine's productivity. And they also go, and they also go into the mechanics and corrode the engines. So that's also another part we have to look at. And mission control room. I'm going to explain what a mission control room is. And just to, uh, just to let you know, this is the image of the mission control room in, in SDSC Shah. And you can see it's like a dome. And this is where, this is the entrance. And this is where the we entered the mission control room. And fun facts about the mission control room, they have real-time monitoring. As in, they can monitor any rocket they want in real time, live. Launch authorization. So the launch authorization is being launched from the mission control room. As a, so it's not being launched from a gallery or anywhere else. Redundant systems. They in, even counting the system they have to operate the rocket, if they fail, we also have backup systems to get the rocket running. We have a communication hub. If it was a manned mission, we, we would be able to communicate with the humans inside the rocket using the same mission control room. And it's also, it's also referred as the central nervous system of the rocket because, they are, because the mission control room is what controls the rocket as, as how the nervous system controls us in our body. This is what controls the rocket. And this is 13 kilometers away from the launch site. So isn't it marvelous? I mean, we are able to launch, we are able to control rocket from 13 kilometers away. And even when it's at space, that's just pure incredible. Now we're going to look at the next one, which is astronauts. Fun facts, why are we launching humans to space? Research related to zero gravity based experiments. As in, so for example, for cancer medication, they have to be tested in zero gravity based surroundings and that is where launching humans into space comes in so with humans in space we could potentially use space as a lab for zero gravity based experiments and data transfer what does this mean so for example you're sending a message from you are sending a message to your friend who lives for example in dubai but the message passed through in a second. How is that possible? Well, there are humans currently in space monitoring every single, they're monitoring the servers which control the, the communications, uh, the messages being sent from across the globe. And the way it's being quickly sent is because of the satellites in space. They help in passing through the messages and there are humans in space which monitor the servers. And did you know we have to stay in quarantine for 14 to 20 days after coming from space because they're used to the non-gravity based uh, uh, 
surroundings and they have to get used and because of also of the radiation and an astronaut can mean any field example doctor engineer because they are also being used in space so doctor needs in case a uh, astronauts being hurt engineers being like for example the iss engineers need to be in space and they can be an astronaut and our future plans what are we going to do in the future let's look at sdc shar you know all the time the launches happen in the day like as in the afternoon or in the morning well next time is going to happen in the night that's going to be a bit different and gangayan project manned mission on orbit so actually we are going to be launching a capsule in which there yeah, there's going to be humans in it and it's going to be orbiting the earth three times and then landing back into the radiant sea isn't that marvelous and now some facts about sjc shar they only make east face launch as in the rockets can only be launched in the east face side and that might be a disadvantage low gravity shri kota actually has a signal like a not too much but little little less gravity than other people uh, other places that's why shri kota is was chosen for the launch site surrounded by sea so on both the sides there is going to be water and if a failure happens the rocket can dip into the ocean so and they can go into the bay of bengal or the indian ocean and tamil nadu we have actually found a place for a new launch site in tuthukulashekar patnam launches for south direction like i said here it is east face launch but here's going to be in south so that might be a advantage for us and launching small satellites into orbit for now the designs have only been approved for small satellites and that is also into orbit and they're going to be used by private companies not for uh, governmental research and they are also going to be called an industrial space park so um and uh, this is some of the photos i gathered while visiting isro i was able to visit isro using lsf ladak science foundation they are the team which helped me reach isro and gather all this information and on the first image you can see a team with the rocket this is actually the chandrayaan 3 rocket and we've got the mission control room and this is actually an auditorium inside of isro where we could watch a video on the history of isro and about the history of chandrayaan and this is launchpad 1 like i talked about launchpad 2 this is also a launchpad 1 i mean duh so um thank you for watching thank you for watching um i am really sorry if some of this information were incorrect this is all based on my understanding so thank you bye and i'll see you on the next one